Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on performing a Kaplan-Meier procedure in SPSS. This procedure is used to estimate the probability of survival at specified points in time and can be used to compare the survival distributions for two or more groups. Now, sometimes this statistic is used to evaluate survival literally. However, using these fictitious data, I'm going to demonstrate an example where the outcome is not being abstinent from substances or being abstinent from substances. So the event in a Kaplan-Meier in this case would be not being abstinent, not abstinent. That would be an event. And in this example, I have that coded as one. So one equals not abstinent, and zero equals abstinent. So the way I have these data arranged, I have an ID number, and in this case there are 100 participants. I have a treatment group, cognitive behavioral therapy. You can see that's zero. And then I have coded as one, treatment as usual. So in this case, perhaps you're studying an agency and you see they have a treatment in place. We would call this the treatment as usual. And you have a different treatment, cognitive behavioral therapy, and you want to see if the survival distributions are different for CBT compared to the treatment as usual. And then we also have the variable months. And this is the number of months when a participant in the study moved from being abstinent to not abstinent. So it's the number of months when they used substances. To demonstrate the properties of the Kaplan-Meier, I have the not abstinent condition appearing quite frequently. Of course, we would not expect such a high rate of participants moving back to substance use. We would hope to see a lot more in the abstinent category. But for the purposes of this video, the majority would be in the not abstinent category at some point, at some specified number of months. If a participant drops out of the study or they're abstinent at the end of the study, that's referred to as a censored outcome. An event would be not abstinent and censored would be abstinent. For these data, I did not have any participants drop out. So you can see whenever there's an outcome of abstinent, it's 36 months, which would be the length of the study, three years. So before performing the Kaplan-Meier, what we're looking for here is that the CBT group, we're hoping it performs better. If we run this experiment, and our experimental treatment was cognitive behavioral therapy, we would hope that it would work better. But we can see that there's very few participants in this example that remain in the abstinent category at the end. So the way we're determining success is that they remain abstinent for a longer period of time in the CBT level of this independent variable as compared to the treatment as usual. So let's move forward with the analysis. I'm going to go to Analyze, Survival, then Kaplan-Meier. This is what the dialog looks like by default. For time, I'm going to use the months variable. For status, I'm going to use the outcome variable. And you can see that needs to be defined. I'll come back to that in a moment. For the factor, I'm going to use the treatment variable. Moving back to the status, I'm going to click Define Event. And we're looking here for the value associated with the event. So censored is equal to 0, and the event is equal to 1. Not abstinent is equal to 1. So I'm going to input a 1 there and click Continue. Then under Compare Factor, you can see that we have three test statistics here, log rank, Breslow, and Tyrone Ware. The log rank method tests the equality of the survival functions with all the points in time weighted equally. Breslow tests the equality of survival functions by weighting the time points based on the number of cases at risk at each time point, and the Tyrone Ware tests the equality of survival functions by weighting the 
points of time by the square root of the number of cases. So for this example, I'm going to use the log rank method. All the time points are weighted equally. Then I'm going to click continue. Under save, I'm not going to make any changes. You can save new variables here, but I'm not going to make any of those additions to the procedure. And then under options, by default, you have the survival tables and the mean and median survival checked off. I'm going to add under plots, survival. So it's going to be a survival plot. And click continue, and then click OK. So the first table in the output is the case processing summary. The number of events for CBT, 44 out of 50, and for treatment as usual, 46 out of 50. So in terms of the number of events, the two treatments performed in a similar fashion. And we can see the percent censored fairly small for each group, just 12% for CBT and just 8% for treatment as usual. Next we have the survival table. We have the treatment. You can see it starts with CBT here. Move down, we have treatment as usual. Gives us the time, the status, and the cumulative proportion surviving at that time. Or in this case, the cumulative proportion abstinent at that time, not using substances. Moving down, the next table is the means and medians for survival time. And you can see we have a mean value for CBT of 18.9 and treatment as usual is lower at 11.2 and a median time of being abstinent of 17 months for CBT and just nine months with treatment as usual. So we can see there's quite a difference between the two groups what we want to know is there a statistically significant difference between the survival distributions. And to figure that out, we would go here to overall comparisons. We selected the log rank method, and we can see we have a statistically significant result. So we know that there is a statistically significant difference between the CBT level of the independent variable and the treatment as usual level of the independent variable. Then moving down to survival functions, we have a plot here. And we can see in blue, we have the CBT plot. And in green, the treatment as usual. There's also a small vertical line for CBT censored and a small vertical line for treatment as usual censored, matching the color. But in this example, the censored outcomes are all at 36 months so you can see they're at the end of the line here. If we had participants that dropped out during the study we would see these small vertical lines appear at other points on these lines. So what does this survival function plot tell us? Well in this case it appears that the CBT group performed much better. If you look at the 20 month point for example you have just under 20 percent abstinent in the treatment as usual group and if you move up to the CBT you have a bit under 40 percent abstinent and we have similar results for many of the time points and there's no point in time where the probability of abstinence is higher for the treatment as usual it's higher for the CBT at every point in time. I hope you found this video on performing a Kaplan-Meier procedure in SPSS to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me. I'll be happy to assist you.